The Museum of Army Flying here at Middle Wallop has a wonderful collection of aircraft and artefacts that show the history of Army aviation. But there are many other things that go on in the museum as well, such as touring exhibitions, special events, guest speakers, and you'll even find some strange goings on after dark. So let's have a look at some of the museum's special events and check out the end of the show for details of a great competition. It's late at night at Middle Wallop and the museum closed some hours ago. But in the dark, amongst the aircraft, a group of people have gathered for a special event. But what could they possibly be doing? Well, we'll find out later in the show. But earlier in the day, Izzy met up with Susan, the museum's curator, to have a look at a touring exhibition that has been at Middle Wallop. Well, Izzy, this is a touring exhibition that we've currently got at the museum and it tells the stories of a number of different people who have been prisoners of war. So, for example, the um, escape kit that you see here, which is the large cooking pot and the items that are arranged in the bottom of the case, mm -hmm. that belonged to a gentleman called Harris mm -hmm. and he escaped from a prisoner of war camp in Turkey. And he, is, he and his friend actually escaped to Cyprus in a fishing boat and that's why his escape uh, kit uh, is in this country, because he was successful. Cool. I'm not sure what some of these are, like the wooden circle there, is that a compass or something? That's precisely right, it's a homemade sun compass, mm -hmm. because obviously one of the biggest problems that somebody escaping has is that they need to know where they are uh, in order to get home or to get mm -hmm. to safe territory, uh, and therefore they need things like compasses. Um, next, the cooking pot, there seems to be like, almost a sack with something on it. What, what is that? Well, that um, uh, is actually the food that Harris and his friends had. had. Absolutely. Uh, they had very meagre rations that they had to survive on. And the biscuit that you can see, they actually baked in secret in the camp before they escaped. And the brown things are dried soya beans. And so that's what they had to live on while they, while they escaped and anything else that they could find as they, as they crossed the country. That must be pretty hard to only live on that much absolutely, amount. Absolutely. I think I'd get pretty hungry. Yes, so would I. I see there's some chess pieces there. Were they, were they actually used in prisoner of war camps when they were sitting around? Well, that's a very good question because, in fact, uh, certainly in some of the European prisoner of war camps, families uh, and, and relief organisations would send things like board games to prisoners to help them, help keep them occupied. And in fact, I've got some of the pieces out for you to look at more closely. And in fact, these belonged to a Sergeant John Cameron of the Glider Pilot Regiment. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, flying in Korea in 1953 when he was shot down and taken prisoner by the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And the chess set was actually made by a fellow prisoner and incredibly he made it out of local wood using just a sharpened piece of metal because obviously mm -hmm. they weren't allowed knives and in fact he gave it to Cameron in an exchange for a bottle of wine and that's why it's in the museum. They, he exchanged the chef piece for a bottle of wine? He did, he did indeed. <laughs> as well as exhibitions, the museum also holds lots of events such as this military collector's fair where collectors and military enthusiasts can find lots of interesting items like medals and uniforms, antique military equipment and military books. You can also come and listen to guest speakers and Eugene, our resident scientist, has come to see one of his personal heroes. It's the man who created the wind-up radio, the great British inventor Trevor Bayliss. Trevor has been a champion swimmer, an army PT instructor and a circus escape artist. But he is best known for his invention of the wind-up radio and Eugene caught up with him after his lecture and asked him, what was his favourite subject at school? 
My favourite subjects at school, well, there were two things. You know, I used to love swimming. I really did like that, and gymnastics uh, and that sort of stuff. But I also um, enjoyed playing in the workshop, making things, you know, cutting bits of wood. My mum and dad were both creative. My mother was an artist, a very, very good artist, but my father was an engineer, and he taught me how to use a lathe and all the other machine tools. So that was important to me, mum and dad. Is there anything on the drawing board at the moment? Yep, I've got lots of new products coming through. I can't tell you about them, obviously, because they're a bit hush-hush. But believe me, they're going to thrill you. They really are super. And it, that, it hasn't come to the end yet, you know. There's so many potential products on the horizon, as to be unreal. But we are all inventors. I don't get up in the morning and say, I'm going to invent something. You mustn't get this idea that you have to be some sort of genius. Forget it. Quite all we men and women come up with the most amazing solutions to everyday problems. And you're one of them. So while Eugene thinks about his future career as an inventor, Izzy is finding out how pilots avoided being captured by the enemy in World War II. In 1939, a secret organisation was set up called MI9. And that was designed to uh, produce lots of specialist kit and equipment to help servicemen who might find themselves behind enemy lines to either avoid being captured or to escape if they were captured. Um, and one of the things that they come up, came up with were things called escape kits. And these were issued to um, people like glider pilots just before they went on an operation. And they were a small sealed box that contained things like matches and a small amount of food and a miniature compass. And also one of these, which is a silk map. Mm -hmm. The thing it doesn't look like it made, it was made out of paper. That's exactly right. They, they made it out of silk and other sorts of, of textiles for a number of different reasons. Firstly, you could squash it up and hide it in a very small space and it wasn't creased or crumpled. Uh, secondly, uh, if it got wet, you could still use it. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was a lot more resilient than paper. It could take yeah. more wear and tear. And lastly, it didn't make a noise if you were using it. So if you wanted to yeah. hide it in your clothing or, or use it in secret, it was more quiet. So if you were in the night and a prisoner of war camp, you couldn't use it without the German knowing that that's, you were there. That's exactly right. And the other kind of thing that was issued to a glider pilot before he went on an operation was this, which is foreign currency. Now again, if he is trying to evade capture or he's escaping, then he may need local money to help him buy food or whatever. And this particular uh, group of, of money was given to a glider pilot just before Normandy. Are they all from France? They are, yes. In fact, what happened with glider pilots when they were taken prisoner is that one of the first things that the German looked for and, and took off them was their escape packs. So by the time they were taken prisoner, the chances are he wouldn't have had this on him anymore. It would have been taken off him. It's now late in the evening, the museum is closed and all the visitors have gone home, or have they? A small group of people are still in the museum and they will be here all night. They are the ghost hunters. Try and pick up on him when you are doing a vigil down here, please. I feel, uh, feel uh, quite a strong energy with this gentleman. Um, and he's connected with one of the aircraft. So what are they doing here at the museum? We're here tonight to investigate the supposed uh, paranormal activity, the hauntings that, uh, that have taken place in this museum. So uh, we investigate a lot of places around the country and it's always nice to come somewhere new and this is our first time we've been here. Some locations we go to we, we never get any activity or very little. It's, it's uh, very fleeting sometimes. We're hoping to interact with spirits um, that maybe have had an association to the artefacts and the aircraft that are here maybe even some that are related to the land or the location. And there's some paranormal history to the museum, which is where we're interested. We find locations that we believe to have had recent activity of the paranormal. Hello, spirits of the Fire Museum. We come here with the greatest of respect for you. We'd just like to learn a little bit more about you, who you were, what you did, if you fought for your country. Could you please make your presence known by making a noise somewhere in this room?
for the museum is definitely a spooky place at night. So let's leave our ghost hunters to their paranormal investigations. The Museum of Army Flying has a new website and on the Young Eagles page you'll find details of a great competition. Just check out the website for this month's question and details of the prizes. That's all for this show and we look forward to seeing you all again next month.